Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? Alex with you here again, as usual. Thank you for dropping by. Thank you for tuning in. I am extra excited about this particular video today. I'm extra stoked about making this video just because I'm going to show you guys a chess set that I also recently acquired from Royal Chess Mall, which I believe, honestly, to be one of the I would say most beautiful chess sets that I've pretty much ever seen. And that is a pretty bold statement for me to make considering how many chess sets that I've already reviewed, owned, or had people share with me to be able to say that a particular chess set, now you, you guys know me, I don't, I don't say these type of bold, very definitive statements like this. So in today's video, I will share with you guys this awesome chess set that I would probably say based on its aesthetic uh, elements, I would consider one of my now most favorite chess sets. Uh, hands down, probably one of the one of the five best chess sets I've, I've seen. Uh, this time around, once again, it's from Royal Chess Mall. It's the 1950s Fischer Dubrovnik chess set, I guess you could call it an antique reproduction. And get this, this is the, the coolest point is um, boxwood and mahogany. Mahogany, I, I've never actually, I don't know, maybe in some other parts of the world where like they do birch and what whatnot, other other woods, but mahogany isn't necessarily one of the one of the woods that I see that often being turned into chess pieces. I googled, in fact, to just make sure, and it did say mahogany, not one of the common woods out there, a little bit more rare, used primarily to make furniture, musical instruments, um, even sometimes chess boards, where you have to cut the pieces of wood, but not necessarily so much to make pieces, just because the indication is that the mahogany wood doesn't turn really well, so that got me really interested. I got the chess set and it looks beautiful, okay? I don't know whether or not they're using mahogany, like pure mahogany wood to make the pieces or whether or not those are like mahogany stained where like they would take golden rosewood or some other type of wood and then they would apply some kind of a stain to it. But you know what? The reality of the fact is it doesn't matter. On their description page, it says this particular chess set is sold out at this time. However, it does say in the, in the description it's mahogany. But in the title of this particular chess set, it said mahogany stain, I think. I'm not really sure. Regardless, the important thing is that the, the way that this particular chess set looks is really quite nice. And in fact, I'm gonna show you guys why I believe that this particular chess set is uh, objectively aesthetic and what we can learn from looking at this video and looking at the different elements that I'm gonna show you guys, why I believe that there, there isn't like a subjective type of a, oh, you know, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder when it comes to the chess sets, that there's actual, actual little tiny elements present in these type of chess sets that make the chess set sort of flow, flow where that every piece is made to complement the other pieces. And when that's the case, it looks very pleasant and it's nice to play on. Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at this particular chess set. And one thing I have to say, I'm not surprised why Fisher believed this to be one of the prettiest chess sets out there. Let's take a look. Okay, here we are. This is the 1950s Dubrovnik, Fisher Dubrovnik chess set that you see here. Due to the uh, shallow depth of field that my lens produces, we might not get everything in focus at the same time. However, these are the, the boxwood uh, light pieces. I would probably love to get a clarification as far as whether this is stained or, or pure mahogany. But you know what? As far as a practical approach, it really doesn't matter because these pieces look amazing. Get myself right over here, hopefully a little bit out of focus. I don't want to be in focus. I want the pieces to be in focus. But this is an example of why 
the chess websites, like the chess distributing websites, any one of them, it, it just, it, a lot of times it, we don't get a good representation of what the chess set's all about. Even like for this, for example, this one, if you go to Royal Chess Mall, you look at their pictures, their pictures are decent and they kind of show you, okay, this is what the pieces look like and whatnot. But the reality of the fact is it's not until you actually get these pieces in your hand when you truly realize just how, how lovely these pieces are. If we look at the king, and I'll show these pieces up close, the the overall shape of the king proportionately. You've got the thick, the thick, weighty, weighty base, and then a nice, nice medium-sized neck here. But what's more important is the top. It's the top and the roundness overall here of the top portion. Just how nicely rounded this top part is that makes this this king, in my opinion, just you know, very pleasant to look at because, and I've mentioned this a, a lot in some of the, my other videos, uh, to me, uh, this right here, this, this little border that, that goes from top to side, it's a, it's a very, very variable point in a lot of different kings. Sometimes they'll make it sharp, sometimes it protrudes out a little bit more, sometimes they make them super narrow, sometimes they put some kind of a design on it. But in, in, in my opinion, having this nice little roundness here where it's not super round, but it's just round enough to, to, to seem pleasant, it, it just, it hits the spot. You know, in my opinion, when I look at it, I feel like it, it, it does. Second and most important thing that I want to show you guys is the transition of the height of the pieces as we go down this way, for example. We have a nice, almost, if we could measure this, we, I would probably say it follows a very good representation of what I feel like is the right d dimensions of how chess pieces should be. Um, you have the king being tall, then we can almost draw a line all, all this way. And I know that the rook's probably a little bit out of the, of the image right here, but we can almost draw a, a straight line that would go from the the tallest piece to the shortest piece, and we could get a, a reasonable, reasonable straight line. Um, the king here is 3.8 inches in height, and uh, like I said, this particular chess set's been made to replicate the original dimensions of the Dubrovnik chess set from the 1950s, and I, I, I overall think it, it's been done really, really quite well. Um, but not only is the the shape and the the overall you know proportionality of the pieces that's important but also how when you look at these particular chess pieces you see how the king has the the ball and then the king's got this roundness here and the same type of a roundness in the ball is replicated in the queen the king's very nice and soft here on the top it's got a nice smooth transition there's no sharp edges anything besides the little ring but that the, we're not really concerned with the ring but when you look at the queen you could you could tell that the queen's been made to complement the king if you found this queen somewhere in a big bag of other different queens i could bet that you would probably say these two belong together same goes for the bishop now the, the, the alternating top here is the same way that it's been, I believe in the original one, but uh, it's a nice touch. I think that the alternating top where the top here is a dark color looks nice. It gives a little bit of a vari variability, a little bit of sort of uh, a pop to the bishop. Uh, I feel like it's, it's, when my wife saw this, she said, why is the top different color? I said, that's just how it's supposed to be. Uh, but you still have the little ball and it still looks very kind of roundish sort of like this so it really does look like these three really go together uh and then we have the um the the knight the knight's really quite nicely done um just like the other knight of my burn dubrovnik chest set the head sort of tucked in together with the body and it creates a sort of roundness to the whole chest piece it, looking from the front here like this it's got a very nice grip to it it's very sort of uh, modest it's it doesn't protrude too much and yet it's for how it looks it, it overall it, I think it's it's a very aesthetic looking night
Now we've seen a lot of different knights with a lot of different heads protruding straight horizontally, upward, downward, uh, all kinds of stuff. But but this sort of a, a, a very conservative feel to where the heads together with the body just overall looks nice. It I feel like it plays really nice too, just because the the grip you grip it. There's no there's no space in between the head and the body, so you can just grip it together. And it sort of overall makes it easy to play with this. Fast, slow games, what have you, it, it don't really matter. Also, because the head's together with the body here, if the knight falls, you're less likely to have, you know, the knight break off, just because nothing's protruding anywhere. Even the mane here is just kind of together. Um, the rook is unusual looking, uh, very unusual compared to most of the other rooks that I've shown you guys in that the top here tapers inwards. It's not very big and it, it looks like a tower, like a defense tower, but it looks l less robust than some of the, some of the other towers. And, um, once again, I feel like it's because this sort of a curvature inward creates this 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 tapered look that we're going for the the the, the roundness of all the pieces they is sort of replicating this kind of cre adds to the fact that they don't want to just make the the rook stand out and be sort of uh horizontal and i mean vertical and like really sharp they want to make this this kind of a a, a a roundness to it and i feel like they've accomplished this pretty well it it, it's not one of the rooks that we usually see like it looks a little bit different But at the same time it looks nice because it goes together with the set very nicely Let's take a closer look at these pieces. Look at the dark pieces. I mean they are just gorgeous uh, I don't know whether or not my camera is going to be able to really be able to reproduce the colors just the way that I wanted to reproduce. Technology is able to to give us a lot nowadays, but unfortunately, sometimes technology isn't as as good. So I'm gonna try my best, and I'm gonna show you guys. This this is the dark side. This is this is where it really shines, in my opinion, because look at these, look at these pieces. Look at the color. Let, let me just start off by saying, look Look at this color. We've seen so many different dark and light pieces on this channel. And uh, we've seen different colors that look great and some colors that maybe not. But this is kind of like a dark brown color without any hint, without like minimal hint of red. It's kind of got almost like a, a purple uh, tint to it. I think that it's, as far as the dark colors go, whether or not this is stained, whether or not this is real genuine mahogany, whatever it may be, the way that this chest set looks, the way that the dark pieces look, is is gorgeous. I mean, I think they look really quite stunning, in my opinion. It's this sort of a dark purple, like dark. It's it's really brown, really. But if you look at it under different shadings, I think it's got a little, like almost like a little bit of a drop of purple into it. Just looks beautiful. Beautiful overall. Look, look at look at the way that these these pieces are. Um, first of all, I'm gonna say that each and every piece here is is nice and weighty. It's 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 heavy, stable. The last time I checked this particular chest set, I think is sold out, but uh, I'm sure they're gonna have it back in stock. The reason why some of these chest sets are sold out the way that they are is just that the, sometimes the demand isn't as high. Or like a chest distributing company may, may, you know, they are all competing against each other in a way. So whenever it comes for, you know, people buying certain chest sets, uh, if there's not a lot of demand, then they don't, they don't make as many of them because, you know, why make thousands and thousands of one particular type of a chest set if, if you don't have as many orders? It's like when I go to this particular place that I like to eat at called Core Life, uh, it's a great little place to eat and it's really healthy food, but uh, they just did away with arugula. They had arugula. I asked them like arugula was the one that I would always order and they said, well, it's because most of the people don't order arugula. Well, it sucks for me because I always order arugula, so. Okay, so those are the kings right here. Best way I could show you guys. Um, once again, kings looking really quiet fine. I'm sitting by the window and from time to time you guys will notice that it'll either get like brighter or darker so 
just having to deal with non-artificial light. That's just how life is. It's just that most of the other videos we see on YouTube, they tend to be like artificial light all over the place, even outside the window. If I wish, I could just like invite you guys over to my house, all of you, all of my subscribers, and just like show you this particular chest set, but it, it looks nice. It looks really nice. Here's a, in comparison, this is the uh, Burn Dubrovnik. I think it's like Burn Dubrovnik aspired chest set. It's kind of following similar characteristics and I think the height's very similar as you could see. But the Burn Dubrovnik's following completely different, like you got the ball on top. And then the, the top that secures the ball to the top, it's got, it's almost as large as the, the, the ball itself. Whereas on this one here, you have the ball, but then the little base of the ball is, is a lot thinner. And then here, because because of the, the overall look, I mean, this, this looks really pretty in its own right. However, it's different. It looks different. This is where two kings of the same height could, could look very much so different. First of all, you could, you could tell that the Bern Dubrovnik chest set here is smaller, considerably smaller than this, this piece shape-wise. I mean, it's thinner here. It's got a smaller base, even though the base itself is about the same uh, diameter, but it's a smaller, it's a smaller king. Um, and then here on the top, uh, we see that because of the way that they made the, the top have these like little design characteristics, they could, I guess they couldn't do rounded. They didn't do rounded. This is very nice. It's very pretty. Here in comparison, we're gonna see a slightly smaller king. This is the uh, the cook. I think this is a 3.6 uh, inch cook chest set. This is a, one of the ones that I also really like, but in comparison, look the way that the, this top here is very sharp. It's got a more formal look to it. They made the rings round, but the top sharp. Whereas here, the, the rings are kind of sharp-ish, but, but the top is nice and round. So let's take a look at the queens. Queens are, as we've seen before, quite quite shorter than the kings. So there's, but that's to be expected. There has to be some kind of a, you know, if the queen and the king were the same height, it just, it, it, I don't think it would look right. But once again, the same sort of design follows here, as you could see. There's roundness in the top, same as you could see roundness here. We could see in the very top, they have these little divots that are made to sort of represent a pseudo, pseudo spike, pseudo crown in a way. So I think that it, this is great that, that the they made these divots. Without the divots, probably would look a little bit plain, but the fact that the divots are there just makes it complete. I would not even ask for the spikes, honestly, just because they, they look well. Like this queen just looks like nothing's really missing, in my opinion. In comparison, um, Let's put the queen from the, this is the queen from the Bern Dubrovnik. We see considerably smaller queen in pretty much all dimensions, smaller size and everything, but kind of a similar pattern on top. We just have less of those little divots and they're kind of dispersed and made to have different divots, like short, big, big holes, small ones, and Finally, in comparison, this would be kind of a representation of what a lot of the other Staunton type of queens look like. We have nice uniform uh, spikes, sharp on top. You can feel they're sharp when you touch it. This is a nice, pretty queen, but just looks different overall. So that's, that's what this one looks like. Let's take a look at the other pieces. Bishops, as I've mentioned before, uh, the top here is actually kind of long and in, in, in comparison to the rest of the body it almost it almost looks long enough to be considered like almost halfway between now the halfway point if you guys ever go decide to go to a website called chess empire I think chess empire and put in the Skolnik Skolnik I think student um, chess set their um, their bishops this top portion is like almost smack in the middle. It's it's one of the one of the stark stark uh, examples of when when the top is like super huge, super el elongated. But I think this looks really pretty. I wanted to get that Shkornik chest set, but it was just it, it wasn't. And maybe at some other point I'll get it. But um, you see no cuts 
through the top, just the ball. The balls are, you know, different colors. So the top here of the dark piece is supposed to be the same as this. So they're kind of complementing each other. And then in comparison, we do like see in this particular, the same cook chest set that we're comparison all the other pieces to. It's got a nice broad cut through the top. This, this is, this is, I've mentioned this before. I like when the cut is nice and, and, and broad like this. And when it's sort of rounded at the bottom, it makes it look really quite nice. Some people have mentioned that the, they don't like the ball being cut, but I think that this looks really, really nice. But these these bishops, these bishops are, are really pretty looking. Here's the burned Dubrovnik, or the burned aspired Dubrovnik. You could see that the proportions are a little bit different too. This 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 one is almost the same height, but the top part is shorter, a little bit shorter here, which makes it all sort of the top portions probably what uh, would you guys say like maybe 40%? No, not 40. I'll probably say like more like 35%, 36% of the entire um, of the entire piece. Whereas here, I would probably almost say it's it's like 42, 43%. I wouldn't be exactly sure, but this this part is just longer, and that changes our perception of aesthetics uh, quite a lot especially when you're when you're playing with this particular chess set so there you have it really really nice looking bishops here are the knights gorgeous gorgeous looking knights i'm gonna try to just kind of turn it slowly and show you guys the uh, the way that the the wood looks it's beautiful beautiful knight over here and while turning, I hope I can still keep it in focus. An overall very, very pleasant looking night. I'm, I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity to, to own a chess set like this. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think that uh, any, any fine chess collector out there who is wanting to, to really add a nice, pretty, aesthetic chess set to their collection would do well with considering getting a chess set like this. Um, let's take a look. Here's in comparison the um, the Dubrovnik from House of Staunton that I showed you guys before. Um, this looks really nice. This looks like more serious than this. This looks cartoony a little bit. I mean this chess set's nice in its own right but it, it, the, the head here, because the eye is pronounced the way that it is, and it's got this little cheekbone, and it's got sharper lines, kind of makes the, the head look a little more drawn, whereas this particular one just looks more aesthetic. I don't know. It looks prettier. And here's the thing with the mane. See how this one here, kind of, that mane goes forward, almost like a unicorn type of thing, almost like it's going to be spearing somebody with it. But um, whereas here, it's tucked in nicer. Um, see, like here, it's just just nice and flat upwards. It looks looks really nice. Even even if they didn't do this little part, like right after the ears, if they didn't have this little part right here, this little corner, I'd be okay with it. Like if they just had a nice smooth head, that would be pretty cool too. But this addition looks really really nice too. Um, this one's a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller overall. You could tell the body's a little bit smaller. So you could see here in this particular design, it goes from narrow, then it turns into this sort of wideness right here, it diverges quite a lot. Then it goes back to narrow and then it goes into the base. If we look at this one, um, it's kind of following similar patterns. However, it, it, it it doesn't diverge out as much. Because of the difference in tapering that we notice on two different chess pieces, it does give this particular knight more body. Uh, so here we see that even though the head is kind of similar in size, the amount of body that's been left here on this particular piece is smaller than this. And so the the dimensions and the proportion of the of the head to the body 
is much different here than it is on, on this particular chess set. Here we see as a comparison the uh, what would look like a, a normal Staunton-like uh, knight with, with a relatively typical type of a, a face and, and body. Um, very different, very different than the Dubrovniks, but we're not, we're not comparing this because it's just, this is completely different. Uh, but just for sort of, I guess just for completion's sake, we want to we'll take a look and see that all these knights share the commonality of having a base, obviously a head, a main, ears, and a body, so at least that's similar. However, the head here is going to be a lot different. Um, in all three of them, in fact, the heads are, are quite different. Um, here we can see that the, the knight's showing a little bit of upper teeth. I don't think it's showing lower teeth. No, it's just an upper teeth and kind of a lower lip, mouth slightly open, nostrils present. Uh, whereas in this one, um, we don't see teeth. Um, neither do we see teeth in this one. If there's just a little line through the mouth. Um, we do have nostrils in this one. We do see have nostrils here uh, and here. Just the, the way the nostrils are pointed a little bit differently. Here it's kind of a lot, a lot more down than the other ones. So there, there you have it. Really, really quite, uh, quite a, a, a variability in how the knights can look. Let's take a look at the other piece. These are the rooks, uh, kind of on the more unusual unusual looking rooks just because of the the taperedness of the top as you can see here um, usually what we see in rooks is a kind of a very very uniform feel to them uh, rooks don't change a whole lot so being able to see rooks that are slightly different is also kind of exciting because i don't know rooks are all the same but in this particular case they're a little bit different um, you have five cuts on on top um, four cuts will make a rook more uh, symmetrical, whereas five cuts gives the rook a more of a rounded appearance just because the cuts are oriented at like exact distances apart um, or close to it. Um, so you have kind of a round bottom, then you have the rings, then you have this top here that sort of converges, but but then at the top we have the the, the, the very top portion and it's trying to do the same thing as the other pieces. It's trying to, to create this sort of a like if we extrapolated to the top and, and and we didn't have this this flat cut here, if we if we had a top, it would probably continue on to create like a, a more rounded feel to it. So I feel like that's why the rooks are the way they are. In comparison, this is the rook from from the the other the Bern Dubrovnik, whereas all the other pieces from the, the Bern Dubrovnik were, were considerably smaller than this particular chest set, the rook here is bigger. Um, a lot more straight, a lot more vertical, whereas this one is a lot more tapered. You can see right over here. Um, tops are also quite different. Um, it's got a deeper five cuts and top on both of them. Um, as I mentioned before, as far as rooks go, um, I've seen four cuts. I've seen five cuts. Usually it's either four or five. I have not, don't believe I've seen three. Here's the other rook, the rook to the cook chest set. Um, it kind of follows the same type of proportionality as this one, just a little bit smaller and a smaller top overall, kind of different. Um, what is your guys opinion as far as what, what type of shape of a rook you guys prefer? I mean, these do look unusual but I feel like they fit with better with this particular chess set. So uh, this one here has six cuts. Finally we got the pawns. Pawns are, well pawns are usual, just proportionately pretty much like many of the other pawns we've seen. Really nice broad bases, very stable, stable pawns overall. The felt on, on all the pieces in fact is nice and thick, very good felt. Compare this to the Dubrovnik, burnt Dubrovnik inspired chest set. You can see there's a lot more variability, a lot more curvature in the particular pawn that we see here. Curvature at the top, curvature throughout the entire piece. Here they're a lot more plain, which kind of makes them less distracting in, in my opinion. And then the pawn by comparison of the cook. The cook is about the same height, maybe even just a tad bit taller. For a smaller chest set, 
the pawns are a little tall, but then smaller base and smaller head. I would rather have a broader base for better stability and a slightly bigger head as far as, you know, maybe sacrifice a little bit of a height advantage of this particular pawn just to get a little bit of a better, stabler, more, you know, more stable pawn overall. Okay, so that's all the pieces up close. Well, there you have it, my friends. Like I said, I was super excited about making this video, but I had to kind of pause in between just because my memory card ran out of space. Anyways, I hope you guys found this particular chess set as exciting as I did. I feel like in pretty much all respects, proportion-wise, color, height, weight, I mean, th these, this is a really nice set. A really nice set that's reasonably priced and um, I think that uh, from now on I would consider this particular chess set to be one of my five best chess sets. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, please leave me a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And as always, hope you guys have a safe weekend and a good productive following week. Everybody stay safe and play more chess. See you guys next time, okay? Bye-bye.